Welcome back to the Everyday Surfer Board Test. With thousands of surfers working from home in 2020 with flexible work schedules, the world's demand for surfboards went through the roof, and as a result, there's lots of people desperate for new sleds. I've taken on the bold and noble task of finding the best one. In the last episode, I was pleasantly surprised by Sharp Eye's Inferno 72 and Slater Design's Flat Earth. And in this episode, I'm churning through the rest of the boards in the pursuit of finding the perfect one, or at least working out which are the finalists to take down the coast. Can just one man determine the greatest board which you can buy off the shelf? Well, not quite. Each surfer has their own unique, perfect board, but I can give you an insight into what some of the world's best shapers have on offer and how they ride first time round. Importantly, I have no vested interest in any of the shapes and each of the companies have donated their board free of charge with no extra costs involved, meaning I can say what I really feel about each board. Probably the least impressive. Too knifey, you reckon? Let's continue our search for the greatest surfboard on earth for the everyday surfer. This episode is brought to you by my online surf school, The Surfer's Roadmap, your go-to for all your surfing progression. Check it out at the link in the description below. I'm excited to ride this. <laughs> wow. Asher Pacey model, I think, yeah? Twinsman from Album Surf. 5'6 by 19 and a half by 2 and 3 sixteenths, I think. Flat deck. Far out. I don't know if you can see that, but the deck is essentially like raised and flat. That's crazy. Good thickness throughout the board too. I like that. That's something I would tell one of my intermediates to jump on. Whoa. Wow. I mean, that's a pool board. <laughs> that is, that's a lot of, uh, that's a lot of width. Red Baron from JS. Super wide, sharp tail. Twin fin setup. Dims on this one, 5.3 <laughs> by 20 and a half. Two and five sixteenths. 28.3 liters. I mean, do I even put a tail pad on that? Or is that sacrilege? Little pivot points. Fun looking twinny. A couple of MR twins. A couple of MR, what do you, I'd call them keels maybe. Um, they're going to go in each board, same thing. Yeah, I'm going to run in between sessions and give it a crack. I'm looking forward to it. Love a good twin, sir. Oh, spicy. Here we go. The JS Red Baron is a biscuity twin fin designed for small, fun waves. This board is alive, no doubt about it, but at times it's so alive that it's a little hard to control. This is the kind of board you take out just to have a great time in small surf. Significantly, I actually rode the Red Baron again later on in the cruiser setting at Urban Surf and found that the board performed much better and it just made the experience really enjoyable and easy. For waves under two foot, this board is a great choice.
The album Twinsman is a product of the company's work with renowned twin fin ripper Asher Pacey. I hadn't seen much marketing or messaging from the guys with this one, so had quite an open and, to be honest, excited attitude to try it. My first impression is that even though it is a twin fin, it doesn't need to be surf like one. The moment I actually pushed into a turn, I felt the board come alive with a huge burst of speed that also felt super controllable. I feel like every twinny is marketed as having all the benefits of a twin fin while surfing like a shortboard, and most fall short. This one though, well, I mean, it might just be an accurate description. I loved them both. I did. Oh, the twinnies, the twin off. That was so sick. I mean, at the end of a day where you've surfed like a maniac, it actually just makes sense to jump on a twinny and just sort of pull it back a little bit. Felt like the Red Baron here. It just felt a little bit biscuity. Now, in saying that, it felt um, still quite nice and you could really like loosen everything like as soon as you wanted to you could just sort of whip it round and loose the fins it was just hard to really hold rail on it i felt like i wanted to take off deep and then do a big bottom turn into a big slide but i felt like the bottom turn position i just couldn't hold it at that point it was a bit too loose for me uh and yes yeah, just a touch biscuity but i mean you can see exactly what this board is for it's for those days where it's one to two foot it's small and mushy and you want to go out there and just and rip it to pieces and have a blast and you're guaranteed to to get waves and do some great turns so it's a sick board um i definitely keep it in the quiver for small wave stuff comparing the two you almost can't compare the two because this surfs like like a performance shortboard but it has those twin fin elements in it it wasn't loose and so i put the exact same fins in the album that i had in the red baron but this was not loose at all it didn't feel loose at all it was so drivey like it just wanted to drive to the point where i actually wanted to do more of a cut back at the top of the way there but i ended up doing a lot of cut downs because it just was going so fast and then at the bottom, like I'd do a turn and then I'd sort of put myself in the pocket and it would just project me like way out onto the face. I didn't even have to try, I'd just stand there. Um, by the end of it, I felt like I sort of was catching that power a little bit, sort of reining it in, that speed. I mean, it's like a 5.6, but it surfs nothing like a 5.6. Like it just, it's so, it's squirty, I think is the word. Squirty and radical. So I'm really looking forward to I think I'm going to definitely take this thing down the coast and get it into some proper surf. Ow. Whoa. Shadow. Is that going to be too knifey, you reckon? Far out. From Pizel, 510. Longest board so far. 18.75 by 2.31. <laughs> That's some specific dimensions for 27 litres. Wow. It's not often that I ride a knifey board like this, so and I, I, th I feel like I need to. And who better to try then a Pizel. Sick, we'll get it waxed up, pad it up for the next session. <laughs> wow, this thing looks tidy. Mayhem. Pro Performance Epoxy Light Speed. Wow. Sub Driver 2.0. 5.9 by 19 by 2 and 5 16th. Again, 27 litres on the dot. Not giving me much wiggle room. I feel like I was a bit slow and cumbersome on the 28 litres. 
Oh, so not quite as knifey as the Pizel, obviously. A little bit more breadth here, definitely that sort of mayhemy nose. I mean, sick board. All right, we'll wax it up. After spending the last five to six years riding squashed, shorter shapes, I'm curious to see how I fare on these traditional performance boards. The Pizel Shadow is a favourite of guys like John John Florence and Jack Freestone. It's a high performance shortboard through and through with a knifey outline and a steep rocker, which you can really notice during my cutbacks by watching how much the board comes out of the water compared to something like the previous episode's Sharp Eye. Essentially, this curvature allows the board to be a master at controlling speed as opposed to generating it, the perfect feature for powerful, bigger waves. And I can feel that maybe the pool mightn't be the type of waves that the shadow was designed for. Let's see how we go in the tube. got an advanced turn session coming up and I want to try this Mayhem Lost Sub Driver. I have a feeling this one's going to be slightly more suited to the pool. It's got a little bit more width and foam. We'll see how it goes. The Mayhem Subdriver 2.0 was developed as an everyday performance board and it has been given praise by guys like Kaloe Andino and Mick Fanning, who famously surfed one of Kaloe's trade-ins at the Lowers Pro in 2011. Despite this high-profile praise, the board feels too sticky for me, much similar to the Chili BV2 from the last episode. Perhaps this board really needs a pro's touch or rabbit foot to really come alive. There were a couple of moments where I wanted to go vertical and really kick into it, but I couldn't quite get back down the wave. I feel like the shape of that board uh, also contributes to that. I mean, you look at that, the outline of that board and it's built for amazing waves. It's not really built for like, number one, I don't think it's built for the everyday surfer. It's built for an advanced surfer, for sure. Even a high level intermediate to advance and it's built for like epic waves and it doesn't mean like epic barreling waves i think it just needs like a you know four foot sort of nice wally section it went terrific in the barrel i do find that most uh, boards go pretty well in the barrel here at the pool because it's so easy and perfect but definitely a lot of control could fit in a little snap so that was pretty cool i kind of wish pizel sent a pizalian or something something a little bit shorter and squashed uh, to be a little bit more forgiving. I just couldn't quite get the squirt up into the lip. It felt like I had to kind of, I had to do all the work. Again, though, that would translate quite nicely to, to big waves. Just holding it under my arm, it feels really good, looks really good, just didn't quite perform how I wanted it to in those small waves. So yeah, that one's not gonna make the final, unfortunately. So even though this thing looks incredible, um, it's the only board that I've just gone like halfway through a session, just gone, nah, this is not working. It's 
So I'm not sure what it is because it looks so nice and I, obviously it's a mayhem. Um, but it just did not want to go. It just didn't want to push me up into the maneuvers. Again, I had to force it in a big way. There are a couple little pocket sections where I was able to open up and do like a couple of decent turns. So obviously it's something that you could get used to, but I think it just, it just didn't feel alive. It didn't want to drive me through turns. I sort of had to force it a little bit and it just felt really stiff for um, <clears throat> what I was trying to achieve in the pool. I've ridden Mayhems before and, and loved a couple of them, but this one just, yeah, just didn't quite do it. Again, we're sort of approaching this tail end and I really need to sort of refine and, and pick a couple of standouts. This one, unfortunately, is not gonna make it. I can see it working for, for some surfers, even for me, just didn't happen quick enough. Sorry, guys. It sucks not having a positive reaction to a surfboard. I know full well that these boards could be the perfect board for someone out there and that my opinion is just that, it's an opinion. But this is the nature of a board test. So one hour each in the pool. I'm finding that it's, it's almost not enough for a board. I mean, it's definitely not enough. It takes longer than that to get used to a board. So I think what I'm really testing is what surfboard or which surfboards sort of align with how I surf and my style and the things I want from a board as opposed to how easily can I get used to a board. Most of the boards that I've ridden, actually all of the boards that I've ridden, I can see myself getting used to. And one of the differentiating factors between that in a positive experience and a negative experience is I don't want to have to work like and feel like I need to over surf a board in order for it to perform well. I would rather rein in a bit of a wild board as opposed to have to force it. And I think that's really what's separating the boards that are not going to come with me to the finals down the coast and the ones that do. It's like a good shape. Oh, fun. This comes across as like a, like a nice standard shape surfboard. As you know, I look at that and I'm like, okay. I think I can feel how this is gonna go already. So this one's in PU. So we weren't able to get the epoxy one done in time. Five nine by 19 by two and five sixteenths. 27 litres. I feel like maybe in some advanced ways this will go right. A lot of tail. Just feels like there's a lot of tail in this board. Standard shortboard, let's see how it goes. Oh, sick. Wow. That's cool. Thin. Thin for what I'd normally ride. Looks sick though, I love the outline on that, that square tail. Heaps of beef. That has to be above 27 litres, surely. Five six, nah, five six by 19 and a quarter by two and three eighths. That's why I got so excited about it. It's not over five six. <laughs> 27.1 litres. Super pumped to try it because <clears throat> I want to surf like Noah Dean. <laughs> Sick. Big fin placement, like wide fin placement looks like. Maybe, it's, and a little bit forward too. Let's get it waxed up. Hayden Shapes Cohort was designed as an everyday go-to shortboard. It paddles well and feels fundamentally understandable the moment you hop on it. Put it in the right part of the wave and it definitely takes over and does a lot of the work in a turn for you. And watching the footage back, it throws a good amount of spray too. Even though this is being advertised as an everyday kind of board, I actually feel like it could be similar to the shadow and how it really comes alive in a steep or powerful wave. And I feel now it is time to let
The Noah Chlorine from LSD was designed for wave pool air contests. Instant speed and quick release. I can really feel this board wants to move forward in straight lines and with great speed. A perfect formula for aerials on an open beachy, but difficult to put into practice in the pool. When putting it on rail, it has moments of electricity which feel great, but other moments where it feels very stiff and sticky. I'm so tired. My hips, my knees, I feel like an old man. <laughs> uh, yesterday I surfed for almost seven hours um, and I'm just cooked. So I'm trying to stay like energetic and alive in between sessions because I don't want my fatigue to impact the board. Uh, and that's why I actually think this then, the Hayden Shapes, was, is pretty sick because not, I was super tired, but it actually kind of went really well. Just totally predictable. I think that was the big thing. It was just like, you, I didn't have, to, nothing surprised me on this board. Like I said, when I first went out, I think it's just like, it seems just sensible, standard. Um, obviously there's a lot of, I'm sure there's a lot of interesting mechanics in this and, fun, and you know, beyond aesthetics, but it, it surfed how it looked it would surf and how it felt it would surf, predictable, there was no like pause between turns. You could just sort of wrap to turn to turn. It was quite nice. Um, definitely, I'd love to surf this in the pool as an epoxy. This is a PU and it felt like it just, there was that 5% way up at the top that it was missing in terms of spark uh, that you want in waves like this. But I feel like this particular board in PU, you could ride that in some pretty solid waves and I think do some really good surfing. I'd love to surf it on the right. I feel like I could put together some nice wraps. So if I get a spare session, I'd love to put that together. But I think this one's got to come down the coast with me because I want to get it out in the ocean and, and give it another go. I was really excited to try the LSD. I just liked the sort of outline of the board. It had moments, but I felt overall it just didn't quite click. When you're bottom turning, that's when you really feel if the board has a lot of juice and a lot of squirt, and this one just didn't quite have it. I had a couple of moments on it, like it's definitely not a bad board. I feel like I could get used to it. I feel like this in the ocean, um, going straighter and doing airs would be pretty sick. Um, but I just found it a touch stiff. Uh, so that's sort of been like the big downfall of uh, any board that I don't like is that it's feeling too stiff. It wasn't too far off, it just wasn't quite there. And I think now we're sort of coming to the point where I have to choose between boards. This one is not going to make the final. I've still got one more board to come, the Wing Yong from Will Weber, 
but in classic Australia Post form, it hasn't arrived on time. So the board we were after has not arrived. <laughs> I'm gonna stretch everything out to over the weekend down the coast so that I can try out all the boards and that particular board, the Will Weber one, is going to only have ocean testing at this stage. I have a handful of great boards to take down the coast for the finals. I mean, I'm shattered. That's probably 12 hours in the water over the last two days here at the pool. Um, maybe 100 and, what, to over 250 waves or something like that. Something crazy. And over the next few days, we're going to sort out a winner. The best surfboard available on the market. It's feeling really exciting. Love it. Thanks, guys. On the next episode of the best surfboard in the world, I'm whittling down our finalists to three boards that I'll take away and surf for a month. Which board will take it out? This episode was brought to you by The Surfers Roadmap, my online surf school for all your surf progression. Be sure to check it out at the link in the description below. I'll see you next week.